Good morning, true crime friends. We are back together again, me and Miss Holly. Say good morning, Holly. We're here, we're having coffee. We are here to talk about um, the state of Charlie Adelson. No, the state of Florida versus Charlie Adelson, honey. Okay, first of all, yesterday was day three of the trial. This dog. Yesterday was day three of the trial, right? And um, I, I was a substitute teacher for Brandy Churchwell's live stream over there on the 13th year. Honey, I got to be the jury four person and it was glorious. I loved it so much. Here's the thing though. Y'all don't understand. Brandy Churchwell, all of these live streamers or whatever who just like follow trials and do it all day. This stuff is hard. Honest to goodness, Miss Brandy is the hardest working woman in podcasting, in, in live streaming as far as I'm concerned. She sits there. She brings the hee hee. She is having her lunch and talking to her dog and doing all of the things. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I'm like, wait, there's a discord. I can't keep up with it. I got to watch the chat. I got to do everything. It was a lot, but I loved it. I loved it. People are like, you should be a streamer. No, thank you. The streamers work too hard. I'm not trying to work that hard. Look, I'm about to sit here. And wait, wait, wait. You know what I'm talking my throat dry already. But look, I sit here, I look cute, I have a tee hee for 20 minutes, and then I'll go on with the rest of my day. Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm -mm -mm. All that, that hard working and live streaming, no thank you. No, 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 that's not my gift. I mean, maybe it is my gift, but um, I, I clearly do not have the work ethic for it, because that's hard work. But look, this is what happened in court yesterday. Child was crazy. First of all, we started off the day with King Tato. <gasps> Latin King Tato with the 401k. Yes, listen, normally gang members don't have a pension. Now, he was not making a lot of money. But um, he did have a job and he kept it for a lot of years. And with him being locked up in prison, he's not going to be able to take loans out that 401k. So by the time he gets out, the power of compounding will have worked out good for him. So he going to have him a little coin. Now, he is not for me, clearly, because my husband does not allow me to date. But um, for you single girls out there, if you want a man with some gold teeth, a criminal record, um, and a, a, a propensity for uh, unaliving people, he might be the man for you again. Not for me, maybe good for you. This is the thing that struck me about that, right? The the state got up there and they asked him the questions and they were just like, okay, Mr. Rivera, blah, 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 blah. He answered the questions. He's real soft-spoken. He was just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh, that silent type. My husband's a little bit like that. But you know me, child, I'm loquacious. So I needed somebody who was a little bit more the silent type. That way I have not been interrupted in 20 years. It works out just fine for me. But he don't have a lot to say. He don't ask a lot of questions. He just goes and does what he's supposed to do. He's a man who's about his business. And also it's striking to me that he has better family values than the Adelsons. He was like, I'm not killing no man in front of his kids. That's mm -mm, I'm not doing that in front of the kids. Meanwhile, the Adelsons are like, well, he's not doing what we would like. So please unalive him. Mm -mm, Adelsons. Come on now. Y'all supposed to be like the big muckety mucks in the community, the upper crust. Honestly, your behavior is trash, but that's just one woman's opinion. So the prosecution, Miss Georgia, good morning, Miss Georgia. You're absolutely not watching this, but hey, girl, hope you have a good day in trial today. Um, she gets up there and she asks him her questions and okay, she goes and sits down. And then, well, that was like Friday. She asked her questions. Today, Daniel Rushbaum got up there. Daniel, Daniel. Oh, Lord Jesus, you had all weekend to work on questions. All weekend, you did your homework and you laid out your questions and you did not move the ball at all. Not even a skosh, not a little bit. But he got up there, he asked some weak sauce questions and I was like, okay, okay, okay. But it was very clear, abundantly clear. He was scared. Normally, he's like ranting and raving and waving his arms and climbing on the lectern and doing everything else because he knee high to a duck anyway. Is he climbing up on the lectern so we can see him better? Brother, stand there and ask your questions and act like you got some common damn sense. But okay, he shows up and he asks his questions. He was real respectful because, you know, he was like, wait, 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 wait. This dude was in charge of all of North Mi uh, of South Miami, uh, of North Miami, of South Florida. He's like, I live in South Florida. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I don't want to run afoul with this dude because he can find out where I live. So he was like, OK, we're going to ask this question. I'm going to tiptoe into it. Please don't murder me. He's like, OK, let's talk about the first trip. And Tato was like, let's go. I was like, ooh, that, ooh, child, that let's go did a little something to me. My kitty cat ple clearly has terrible taste in man, but he was like, yeah, let's go. I was like, oh, oh, okay, sorry, what did he say? And so then um, the lawyer started asking all these questions, real meek, real mild, tiptoeing into it. And he walked um, 
he walked the king, King Tato, through all the questions, Louis Rivera, and Louis answered the questions with the, he, Louis answers questions like my teenager answers questions, mostly in grunts. <clears throat> But because I got four kids, all sons, I speak grunt. I was like, yeah, okay, that was very clear to me. Clear as mud, but okay, I got it. And he was sometimes like making little jokes or whatever, asking the question, Tato's face. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, okay. So he got through the questions and he was like, okay, um, please don't unalive me. I have one more. So the next time y'all went to Miami, um, did you, I mean, the next time you went up to Tallahassee, did you get the money? Did this happen? Please do not unalive me. And then, and then you saw, you thought you saw the lady. Please don't unalive me. At least that's what I heard when he was talking. He just was sitting up there begging for his life and trying to get his questions out. Okay. Um, are the Adelsons paying for this? Ah. Okay. I, mm, okay. Adelsons. Y'all might, y'all, y'all, Adelsons, your son going to jail. I'm just, I don't know if you knew that before now. It's abundantly clear to me. And pretty much the rest of the world. Your son going to jail. Do y'all know how to bake a cake with a file in it? Maybe it could be a kosher cake, child. I don't know. But your son going to jail. Where well, he's not going to be safe at all. Because it's a whole bunch of neo-Nazis up there in Florida, child. It's not going to go good for you. You know I done talked my throat dry. Hang on. By the by. I have invested in good coffee. Y'all know, y'all know I love garbage coffee. I am a garbage coffee aficionado. I love myself some Sanka, some instant. Just put the powder in the hot water, stir it up and keep on moving, right? But for whatever reason, after talking about garbage coffee last week, I was like, you know what? They had that um, pecan pie coffee down at the Stu Leonard's and I got myself a bag of a $14 for a bag of coffee. Why is it so much money for coffee? But oh my God, it's delicious. I might not ever be able to go back to garbage coffee. I like, I'm, I'm stroking it like it's my friend. Like it, it kind of is my friend because it gets me going in the morning. Hang on, one, one, one more sip and I promise then I'm gonna finish my story. It's just so good. And then I put that um, caramel creamer in it. Sweet Jesus. So anyway, so um, King Tato's on the stand. The lawyer is begging for his life. I mean, asking questions and real, real scared, like real scared. And then he's like, okay, thank you, sir. Please don't. And I was like, he's going to finish with some blank flourish. He did not. And then the next witness was Katie McBonawa. <sighs> Honey, I was living my best life. I freaked all the way out. All the way out. I was like, okay, okay, Katie's here. Katie's here. Let's see what this lying liar's going to say. What's she going to say? Is she going to roll over on Charlie? Is she going to tell the whole truth? Is Charlie going to look at her? What's going to happen? So she comes in, and let me just give you the mental image, right? Katie is a short thing, cute. She's a little, um, I think she's a Filipina, right? Cute little brown girl. Oh, she could have had such a decent life for herself, but she has terrible taste in everything. Um, she still has her little glasses. Who's the little chicken? Remember Foghorn Leghorn, that commercial, that, that cartoon when you was a kid with the Foghorn Leghorn and he was dating a woman who had a little kid. It was like a, a, a round head with the little round glasses. That's what she looked like. She looked like that little chicken to me. Well, her cute little puckery lips. People pay cash money for them lips and she just got them naturally. She didn't get herself some murder boobs with the money, but you know I'm off topic. So let me pull it on back together. Look, this is what happened. So Katie gets on the stand. She's wearing a really nice purple outfit. Now, listen, I think that if I went to prison, which I have no plan on, um, I would want black because black is slimming. And I would want something that was a little bit body kind because I'm big on top and big on bottom, but skinny in the middle, relatively speaking. You know what I mean? And so black is the best color for me, like a Diane Von Furstenberg wrap dress. But that purple was not bad. OK, so anyway, so Katie gets up there. She's wearing her purple. She has her handcuffs on and her shackles and her chain. You get the chink, chink, chink of change. And historically, I would hear that little sound and I would think Jacob Marley and uh, This Is Your Life. No, that's not this. You know what I'm talking about. The Ghost of Christmas Past and all of that. Now, because of King Tato, every time I hear the chink, chink, chink of chains, I think, ooh, is King Tato nearby? But anyway, so Katie gets on the stand and she tells her little tale. And she's like, look, I lied for a lot of years. I lied at my trial. I tried to save my baby daddy, but that didn't work out good for me. Now I'm in prison for life. And they sent me up here with no lawyer. My lawyer was like, girl, you got to be crazy. You got an appeal. But I was like, mm -mm. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to talk to the people. And hopefully they, I get to see my children again. And I tell them the truth right now because the truth needs to come out, ma'am, ma'am. Ma'am, you and the truth are generally speaking, not on first term basis, a first name basis, which is fine, I guess. But this is what I think happened. She's like, okay, I did this thing. It's clear from her bank statements that this was a poor and struggling single mother. She hooked up with a rich doctor dude 
and he was throwing her crumbs, literal crumbs. But because of the economic situation that she comes from, that little, little bit that he was giving her was a lot to her and meant a lot to her. And so she was like, oh my God, my children and I have never lived this well. Keep in mind, she talked about having a diaper bag when this murder was planned 10 years ago. That meant she had a, she had little kid, a diaper bag. How old are you? How do you kids when you carry a diaper bag? Cause you got diapers. That's like under two years old. So now she has a 12 year old at least a 13 year old, maybe probably like a 12 year old. Hang on. She's a struggling single mother working dead end jobs. And all of a sudden she has, she's doing her best, right? But now all of a sudden she has this influx of cash. She has murder boobs. She's able to do things she was never able to do before. He's paying for her mama to go on a cruise. She was like, I'm going to take my mom on vacation, maybe a camping trip, which ill. Um, all of a sudden, he's like, you know what? Don't go on a cross-country RV trip. What about if I pay to send you and your mother on a cruise? What? What? I've done both. Okay, I've not been on a cross-country RV trip. But I have been in RVs and they're nice and would not want to be on one like all day driving across the country. Next thing you know, she's on a cruise? She's like, I'm living my best cruise life. Are you kidding me? Will you just show up and all the food is there and everything is paid for? They probably even had a balcony cabin, a suite or some mess like that. Mm -mm. She's like, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. And she thought, this is how it's going to go down from now on. I'm finally going to get some breathing room. I'm going to be able to live my life. A couple of years goes by. and But, but here's the thing. She got to keep kissing, kissing the feet of this scumbag. And they're like, I love you. No, I love you. In my opinion, the text messages demonstrate that Charlie Adelson and Possibly the Adelson family were incredibly grateful, very, very happy and grateful for the help that Katie provided them in Unaliving Dan. They were living their daily lives. Uh, Charlie was out here being a traveling periodontist. Katie was out here just paying her bills willy nilly. Um, they were like, oh, who knew my life could get so much better from a teensy little murder? Here's the thing, though. It was so short lived for two or three years. She lived really, really well. And now she's in prison for the rest of her life. That's awful. But this is all about her decisions because it's not like it was an oopsie murder. She unalived the person. I mean, she didn't go up and pull the trigger, but she arranged it. She was the middle person. She was a part of it. So this is just karma showing up at her door. But for like that little short term pleasure, now she has messed up the whole rest of her life and possibly her children's lives. A lot of these people did. So while these folks are getting what they deserve on balance, the whole thing is sad. Right. So Katie gets off the stand and some other people came and they said some other things. But for the most part, I was living, living my whole life for the Katie testimony. The other thing, though, that really struck me about yesterday's testimony was all of those text messages, the text messages back and forth and the phone calls back and forth. But the text messages more than anything, where they talk about um, when Charlie Adelson is corresponding with his mother about the plan and all this other stuff. And oh, we're having a big birthday present for dad. Is a murder a proper present? Do you have to send a thank you note? I don't. Mm. And it's pretty doggone clear to me that the Adelson parents were involved in this from day one. If nothing else, they helped pay for it. The night of the murder, they were like, oh, we have to go up and see Wendy. But first, we're going to drop by Charlie's house and we're going to give him a bunch of money. <clears throat> and then we're going to be on our merry way. And uh, a Mama Donna Adelson, trash bag, because she a trash bag. She's trash. Um, washed the money? Why was the money wet? Because by the time Sigfredo and them got the money, like the money was stapled into stacks of a hundreds and put in a Ziploc bag and then put in a Publix bag and then put in something else. It was in a whole bunch of bags. It was moldy, which means it was damp when it went into the bag. Was she literally money laundering? Like, did she have her maid? Because you know she wasn't washing it herself. Did she have her maid down there with like, um, what are those little bags that you put like your bras and your panties in or whatever for you put them in the washing machine? Did she put the money in a delicates bag? Did she just let it fly free in the washing machine? The money was wet or worse yet did it grow mold from sweat like did you have that money stored in your bra your shoe your pants i don't i'm scared of this wet money this is why i do cashless transactions like mm -mm, you can't just sell me but i guess you can't sell somebody like a hundred thousand dollars what is the limit on sell unclear so look yeah, I need to get to the gym. I need to get to the gym so I can keep my waist snatched. You know, I'm going on a cruise soon. I'm trying to lose 17 pounds in the next two weeks. Now, is that going to happen? Unlikely. But I'm going to do my best. I'm giving it my best shot. I'm drinking my, my excellent quality coffee. And um, I'm about to go over to the gym and run. Now, listen, 
like always, I will be in the comments over on Miss Brandy Gla I always in my head I keep calling her Brandy Glanville. Brandy Churchwell's live stream. I will be over there today, all day, like I always am, in the comments at work, getting things done, um, and watching this trial. Because I am breathless. Do you know how many years I have waited for this case to come to trial? There's a podcast called Over My Dead Body. Tally, that's like Tally, T-A-L-L-Y, put out by, I think, Dateline, maybe it's on Wondery, something like that. But the Over My Dead Body podcast covers this case, but it only covers it up through the arrests of Katie and Sigfredo and uh, Luis Rivera. I don't know that they go into detail about Luis Rivera. I got to go back and watch. I mean, and listen, because mm. anyway, clearly. I have garbage taste in, man. Here's the difference between me and Katie, though. I don't let that mess ruin my life. I lust from afar and keep it moving. I have a happy home. I got some kids. I got a husband. Me and my husband saw this movie on Netflix the other day about, like, how to live to be 100 or something, and it talks about blue zones. We've decided to make our house a blue zone. A lot of things they talk about, they already do. So we, like, eat the Mediterranean diet, and we get exercise, and we're in, like, a loving relationship, blah, 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 all that stuff. So this is, like, the blue zone over here. I'm trying. I'm going to make my house just like my mandy cape my super mandy cape but look at the end of the day i hope you have a fantastic day that does not involve any kind of crimes and um keep yourself safe out there i will see y'all over in the comments in the chat on the 13th juror like i always am many 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 thanks to everybody who showed up on the 13th jury yesterday i am so grateful wait did i say like and subscribe please like and subscribe child i always forget to say that part um i'm so grateful for all of you who showed up and supported me yesterday there was like 500 some odd people live in chat i'm sure a lot of people have been on the rewatch as well and i just i had such a good time live streaming is so exhausting so exhausting brandy girl you are out there doing the lord were Whew, sweet Jesus. But um, y'all have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.